Hello YouTube, I thought I'd just do a quick uh, video on how to use Amsteel for hammocks. This is a, a very very strong Dyneema cord. Uh, this is 764th Amsteel. It's made by the Samson company in America and it's used for a lot of uh, hammock work if you want to go ultra lightweight and things like that. Uh, it, it's, um, it's a hollow core, it's got strands woven in and out, uh, So and it's quite slippery so you can't really tie knots with it because it slips and it's not very good so you have to splice it. So this is going to be a quick tutorial on how to splice it. This is to make six foot whoopee slings, if you don't know what they are go and google them. Um, so you get Amsteel in any length obviously but 25 feet is a good hank to buy and they come in 25 foot lengths from a lot of stores. Uh, you can get it from DD Hammocks, I get mine from Dutchware in the States, uh, lots of places sell them. Uh, this is a grey Amsteel, I don't think you can get this in the UK. And uh, 25 foot lengths, so you chop that in half exactly and that gives you 12 and a half feet and that's enough to make a six foot whoopee sling uh, you can get away with 12 feet if you want but just cut cut a 25 hank in half and you've got enough for two whoopee slings then so uh, some things we need to to have if you're going to have a go at this it's quite easy to do it's not really difficult you can just buy some stuff and have a go um, things you need, you need a very sharp knife because this stuff is really difficult to cut uh, so you need a super sharp knife, so I've got a, a ceramic uh, blade I also use this knife, or I used to use this knife, I don't really use it anymore this is a CRKT knife um, so I used to use this one uh, but I use the ceramic blade now so you have a very sharp knife, cutting board uh, you need some pens, I use a sharpie, yellow or green, something light, not too dark because it shows up afterwards. You need something to make holes in this stuff, uh, so I use a owl. You can buy them on eBay really cheap, um, and it's quite a sharp point, but the important thing is it splays out to quite a big taper, and you need that. If you haven't got an owl, these are only a few pounds on eBay, but if you haven't got an owl, you can use a pen, um, and just use this part of the pen to uh, to push into the Amstel to, to make a hole in it. You also need something to go down the length on the inside of the core. Um, so you can use wire. This is the easiest stuff. This stuff I get from a florist. Um, just go in there and ask for flower arranging wire and they got this in different thicknesses this is a, like a green coated one and this is perfect for splicing um, I put a little hook on the end, you'll see later why you need that or why it helps to have that so you can do it there. Um, and a nice sharp point you can also use these things which are uh, loop turners in sewing and on the end, I don't know if you can see it's got a little, like a little hook, and that that goes backwards and forwards. So you can you can open it, push it through, hook your arm still into the hook, close the loop, and then pull it back through, and it it pulls through nicely. These are really good. You can get these for two pound fifty off eBay. Just look for loop turner. This is a ten inch one, which is probably about right to what you need. I like to use these. Uh, but the wire is fine. I'll, I'll use both in the video so you can see what it's like. So, you've got your arm steel, got a cutting mat, got your pens, got a, a very sharp knife, something to make holes, you're ready to go. So first of all we're going to cut this arm steel, this is 25 feet, so we're going to cut this in half. I'll just make one whoopee sling, uh, obviously you need two really for doing a hammock. You may hear noises in the background, and this is because uh, we've got guinea pigs in the background in the sewing room, so you might hear some guinea pigs. So you get your knife and you just make a clean cut. 
that's why it's important to be really sharp nice tidy ends so I'll just take one of these for now first thing you need to do is uh, taper the end so to taper the end the reason you do this is when you bury some of this inside the am still uh, you need to have a nice thin end to help pull it through and things like that so that's quite important uh, so we're going to thin the end out so you take about an inch you loosen the weave I don't know how close I can get you loosen the weave and then you pick one of the strands pull it through like that and with this one because it's tapered you can just keep pushing and it'll almost pull it out for you Okay, you want three of those. So again, what you're trying not to do is catch little fibres like that. You want to actually get a whole strand out. The trick to making good whoopies is to select carefully the strands that you're pushing through and where you're making your holes. So take another one off of there. So you've got three strands, we're going to cut those off. That's a nice thin end. So let's do that. I don't know if I can show you. These ceramic knives are very sharp. <laughs> Try not to cut your fingers off. Okay, so this is now a lot thinner and this will go through easily. Get rid of those. Um, and on this one, I'm going to thin the other end as well. So find your other end and thin that as well. So I'll just go ahead and do that. So you've got your two ends uh, thinned out now. Uh, next thing to do is take one of the ends, get rid of the other end and you need a ruler, you need to do some measuring. So for a six foot whoopee, we need a three inch loop at one end, a locked Brummel loop in one end. So you put it on your ruler, and you're gonna measure, get your Sharpie, you're gonna measure five inches from the end, make a mark, then you're gonna measure 11 inches from the end, make another mark. Okay, so you can see, well it's hard to see, but there's a little yellow mark on there now. I can see it, you'll see it when you do it. So now we're going to make this loop. So you go to your second mark, and it's important to just push it together so you can see, almost see a hole through it. And then you take your awl or your pen, push it through. Now the important thing here is to make sure you haven't caught any fibres. So I've caught a little fibre there. It's very hard to do it in front of a camera. There you go. So I'm through cleanly. Uh, you've got the same number of fibres on this side as you have on the other side, it's got to be exactly in the middle and then you push together and push it down and you start to make a, a hole in the, the am still like that then you take your free end and you pass it through the hole and you pass it through until your mark you made comes through so we, it's hard to see, we've got a mark here just come through like that. Now, so that's part of it. Now what we have to do is take this end and pass it through where your mark is. So you take your, your mark, make a hole again, very important not to catch any fibres, otherwise it won't be very yeah, I'm trying to do it for the camera, but it's very, it's not very easy. There you go. 
So same on both sides. Push it down. And this time you want to go to the all the way to the other end of your piece of am still that you've got. Uh, and you just push it through the hole that you just made. Whoops. It's very slippery. <laughs> So it can uh, slip around all over the place. Like that. Pull that through. And that there is your locked Brummel. So you keep pulling and eventually it'll get smaller and smaller. See it there? And eventually it'll pull really tight. You pull that tight together. So that's your loop. You end up with a three inch loop, perfectly three inches. And then you've got this tail, uh, which you need to get rid of. Now, the strength of this is uh, not just this lock portion here. It's also this bit inside here in a constrictor. So we're gonna bury this inside here. So what you do is you smooth it down to the length Look for the end, take about an inch and a half along again, and then you make a, a hole again. And this is the tricky part. So I'm going to use a wire this time, and then I'll use my tool for the next time. So you take your wire, you go in one of the holes, like that, and then you have to fiddle it till it goes all the way to the end where your lock brummel is. Try not for it to slip out. Just kind of push it and it will slide along. The reason you've got this hook on the end is so when it slides along it can't go off the end, it gets caught. <laughs> when you're doing big berries that's really handy. So you come along. Right, I'm not my brummel now. So you look where this is coming out. And what you want to do is bring your wire out as close as you can to this bit here in the light. So you want it to come out about here if you can. So I'll just do that. Sometimes you want to open it up a little bit for the wire to come out. Don't want to catch any fibers. There you go. The wires come out. And then you open up the wire a little bit like that. And you put it in halfway through the bit that you've thinned. Push that to the end, just like that. Okay. And then what happens is when you pull it, that folds over, and then you end up about the same width as uh, what it would be in the normal stuff. So, and then you push that back down through, and then you have to wiggle it. So you scrunch it up, and you wiggle wiggle your wire and eventually it'll disappear inside like that let's get this going in and then you'll see it coming out at this end there you go it's come out just take it out of your wire and then you take hold of the end you just did and pull it and that'll make a nice tight brummel so you've got this now and when we squeeze all this down it, this will disappear inside so Squeeze in, squeeze in, squeeze in. There we go. Called milk in your berry. Okay, so now you've got a very strong locked Brummel with a it's a five inch berry, um, three inch loop, and that's just at the end of your whoopee sling. So that's that bit's done. So now the next bit you have to do the long berry for your whoopee sling. Now before we start, you need a bead. Okay, these are beads, they're called Capri beads. You've got them all sorts of colours and things like that. Now they're very small beads. Um, you put this on on the end. Not very far. Uh, let me think. Yeah. I'm gonna use my a bit of wire and as it'll all fray and come undone. Okay, so you've got your bead on, and this will stop your whippy sling disappearing inside itself. It's like a little stopper. Okay, so you take your end with the loop, 
I'm going to make some more marks. I'll do it in the light green this time. So now we need to do, we're going to do a 10 inch berry, which is enough to hold anybody's weight on a whoopee sling. Um, so we need to mark 10 inches from the looped end and then 10 inches for the berry. So this is where the whoopee sling is going to come out. So we go 10 inches here. You can see now, it's a bit easier to see. And then we do another 10 inches from that one and that's actually our constrictor for the whoopee sling. I wouldn't do less than 10 inches because uh, you've got the potential for it to slip uh, but you can do more if you want but I find that quite quite good. So this time I'll use the uh, loop turner um, and we need to go up from the loop end we need to find our first mark which was at 10 inches there it is and again go inside the core go down the core, now come out there need to back it up a bit just go down, so this time go all the way down till we get to our second mark and then we'll come out so here's the second mark there you go and you take your free end of your arm steel Put that in, close the little latch, and that should pull it through now. And then you need to pull that all the way through. So again, wiggle, disappears in the end. And it comes out. Okay, and then pull that through a little bit. That's pretty much your whoopee sling done now. So you've got your, your um, bead to stop it disappearing inside. Um, now the only thing you've got now is this funny end, which is not very attractive. And you need a bit of handle to stop, or thickness here, to stop it disappearing inside your long berry. Measure five inches. At that point, bend it, increase it. It creases quite well. Okay, and you go down, do about an inch and a half from the end of this, inch and a half, take it here, and again we're going to disappear this inside, so take whatever tool you want, your wire or your loop turner, go down, you're going to come out where that crease was, there it is. There it is. Put this in your hook. Close the gate. Again, you're going to fiddle about with this. Now you're going to pull it out. You don't want that to disappear completely. There, it's come out the other end, which is good. So I'm just going to pull it now until it gets to just before it disappears inside itself. Like that. Then you milk it and that should disappear. So you milk it down like magic. There you go. And that's a nice handle now. It's got a nice uh, sealed end. It's thicker so it won't disappear up inside your whoopee sling. So that's it really. That's your whoopee sling. Um, save you a bit of money and it's good fun to make. Uh, you can get some really high quality stuff doing it yourself. Uh, you can make continuous loops to go in the end of your channel of your hammock or you can make a dog bone which is a short piece with a loop at both ends push it through that will go through your hammock um, soft shackles if you want to make a soft shackle I'll show you how to make one it's the replacement of a carabiner very strong but super lightweight so if you want to make one of those let me know I'll do a video on those um, and yeah so go buy some arm steel get some wire and uh, have a go Anyway, thanks for that. Cheers. Bye.